Hello and welcome to this session on physics for primary. My name is Anna Mead. The aim of the session is ultimately to make progress in science. I'm going to help to develop your subject knowledge and pedagogical content knowledge in Key Stage 1 and 2 physics. In order to help you answer the following questions, how is your physics cur curriculum organised? Why have you organised it in this way? What are the most important physics concepts that pupils learn in each year group? How do pupils build on it each year? How do you build disciplinary knowledge into substantive knowledge? And how do you show that disciplinary knowledge within physics content advances over time? Hopefully I will help you answer some of these questions as we have a whistle-stop tour through the Key Stage 1 and 2 physics curriculum, comparing content and looking at how we can ensure successful progression. How is your physics curriculum organised? Here are the physics topics in the primary curriculum. Seasonal changes in year one. Light in year three and six. Forces in year three and five. Magnets alongside forces in year three. Sound in year four. Electricity in year four and six. And earth and space in year five. Why have you organized, organized it in this particular way? Is it the best order? Have a think. Had you ever considered that there was this much in year three? Do you do all of this physics in year three? Or do you cover some of this in early years or later? With the, phys with the physics year three content, which do you do first and why? Do you need to have covered states of matter before you teach sound so that you can introduce vibrations? There's, more, there's no more sound in the key stage two curriculum, but can you develop their knowledge when you use buzzers in electricity? In year six, do you do light before electricity or electricity before light and why? After all, we can use electrical energy to generate light or light energy to generate electricity. So thinking about this curriculum, what are the most important physics concepts that the pupils learn in each year group? Let's have a look at the national curriculum now in more detail as we go through this session. So seasonal changes in year one really just um, covers day and length, day length changes across the year. Light in year three and six. No light means we see we can't see anything. Light reflects into our eyes or bounces off objects and into our eyes. Shadows are formed when the light is blocked. Forces in year three and five. We want to teach that forces make things move. We want pupils to learn that gravity causes objects to move towards the earth. Water and air resistance slows objects down. And levers and pulleys can make things work more easily. Magnets in year three. We want them to learn that magnets have two poles, north and south. Light poles repel and unlike poles attract. Sound in year four. We want the pupils to learn that sounds are formed from something vibrating and the vibrations reaching our ear, uh, allowing us to hear. Differences in pitch and amplitude or volume. Electricity in year four and six. We want them to learn about conductors, insulators, and simple circuits, and building, and, the, and troubleshooting also. Earth and space in year five, we want them to learn about day and night, planets and the moon. Which concepts here are you confident to teach, and which are you not so confident to teach? Why is it? There's very little physics at all at key stage one, are the phenomena just too complex and untouchable for the younger children? And does this affect misconceptions later on? For example, they see day and night every day, but only day length throughout the year is taught in year one, nothing in year two. So how do pupils build on the substantive and disciplinary knowledge in each year? Well, we need to link back to previous learning. And how do we check this? We use assessment for learning, 
retrieval practice prior to the unit and at the end. But remember, disciplinary knowledge can be built upon from the last science topic taught, not just from the last physics topic taught. Predicting, recording the length of an object, using a ruler or a meter stick, measuring temperatures of liquids or air, uh, those things, whether we're teaching it in physics or not, we can do across the science curriculum. I've shown you this before, but it's so useful as a summary of the aspects of disciplinary knowledge so that we don't forget that it's not just fair testing. Scientific method is also modeling, synthesis, classification, pattern seeking and experimentation. Using apparatus carrying out specific procedures safely, Knowledge of data analysis is processing and presenting data while exploring the relationships and also communicating the results. And using evidence is writing valid and tentative conclusions that eventually, over time, may lead to the development of new laws. Here is the national curriculum for some particular topics. It's interesting to see them side by side, year one and year five in this case. But there's an issue here with finding out what the pupils know before teaching the topic in year five. The, children's, the children will have probably picked up a few misconceptions on the way here. It's imperative to assess their prior knowledge before continuing with this unit. And again, being careful to not just repeat what the curriculum has, has done in year one. Day and night, up to year five has never been taught, and yet they have seen a day and night every 24 hours of their lives. What have the children thought happens? Do they understand that we are the object moving in space and orbiting the sun? Do they, they, they might remember that from year one, but do they also realize that we're spinning on our own axis every 24 hours? They may have never been taught this at school yet, if we look at shadows made from the sun's light, we can link this to the light unit in year six. Earth and space is then taught again in year eight. Again, quite a big gap. If we move on to light in year three and year six, here is the progression. What disciplinary knowledge can you see here as we teach the substantive knowledge? How do you plan so that you don't just repeat what was taught in year three and ensure the teacher finds out what's remembered from the previous time it was taught? Shadow investigations can be developed from year three to year six. We can develop the measurement to the sizes of the shadows. We could use chalk to locate shadows um, formed from the children in the playground during a whole school day. And we could link this to seasons, but we could also link it to the work in year five on space development of the knowledge of reflection and refraction using simple mirrors, simple plane mirrors. We can then look at swimming pool depth, looking at a pencil in water, how it, it appears to break. We can look at the oil refraction in a puddle and also link it to rainbows, a lovely window into the wider world. Use a ruler measuring to draw straight lines and making sure that the light is, is reflecting into the eye. Children love to have light beams out of the eye, beaming their light out of the eye, making sure that the light beams into the eye. Teaching the disciplinary knowledge here is not simply about fair testing, and we shouldn't forget about looking for the patterns, looking at evidence, and becoming more accurate with measuring recording over time. Light is then taught again in year eight. How do we build disciplinary knowledge into substantive knowledge? How can you ensure that the knowledge is retained and disciplinary knowledge is developed at the same time? What aspects of disciplinary knowledge could we teach in the next unit we're going to have a look at? Sound. It's really important in this unit 
to direct the instruction and not to leave the children to work it out for themselves. This is called inquiry-based teaching. It's important that children need to be led to their conclusions. This is a great unit for developing disciplinary knowledge. At primary level, it's taught in year four, and then not again until key stage three, possibly year eight or nine, so it's a big gap. How do we ensure that the knowledge is retained and disciplinary knowledge is developed then? What aspects can we teach in the sound unit? Well, we can have a look at our working scientifically. We can predict what we think they will hear. We can measure the volume of water in, in bottles and listen to the different pitch of the sound. We could measure the height of air in a bottle. We could measure the width or the length of elastic bands and then pluck them. Remember to state that thicker and shorter will be lower pitched. If you as a teacher can't remember which size or shape is which pitch, this is an opportunity to make sure you practice before the lesson so you teach it the right way around. You could also record pitch and amplitude using data loggers or sound meters. It's a lovely making unit. Uh, there's a great activity on the STEM website called Slidey Blowers. It's a great activity that you could use. How do you show that disciplinary knowledge within physics content advances over time? So we need to think about the differences between how you teach the same topic across the key stages. Key stage one investigations will start to build these skills, simple predictions, simple questions to test, measuring, observing, recording, drawing, concluding by deciding whether the prediction was right or wrong and why, using the because, as disciplinary knowledge increases using very well-planned investigations by you, the development of these skills can be evident in the children's work. Giving reasons for their predictions and conclusions, developing their observational skills and their ability to record data systematically, using equipment correctly and with accuracy and precision. Specifically in physics, this will manifest itself by pupils being able to communicate phenomena from their investigations and results without being able to necessarily see the concept, the force or the electricity, just the effect of it. Thinking about your three, year three and year five forces units, how are they different? How are they the same? Here are the units side by side. Have a look at them and have a think. And then looking at the working scientifically. Which of these investigations do you do? How do you ensure that the pupil's cognitive load is not overloaded and that they only have one or two things to learn in any investigation? For example, we used to run a whole parachutes investigation with pupils designing, then making their parachutes, testing them and evaluating them. Now, we only want the pupils to look at the effect of air resistance, just the one thing. So several different size parachutes are really made, are ready made. Length is written on each size, not area, to confuse the le less mathematical pupils. The masses are already hung on the parachutes and these are color coded with size. Pupils predict as a class, then they choose the height to drop them from. These are timed using stopwatches to two decimal places and this is fine for year five maths. You might want to do it um, to one decimal place or to the nearest whole number if you were going to do this in year three. Don't calculate means on data like this. It becomes a maths lesson and not a very successful one. They can repeat each test though if they, can, if they spot an anomaly. If they want to, they can repeat it, disregard the first attempt as an outlier. Analyzing the data as a graph is okay, but ensure the axes are correct and adapt it accordingly. You might want to give them the axes. Bar or line graph, it doesn't matter necessarily. It probably won't be directly proportional using their results, but you've had a go at doing some 
um, some other kinds of disciplinary knowledge in terms of their data processing skills. Another favorite with the forces unit, particularly in year five, is using different plasticine shapes in a measuring cylinder or a tall, clear bottle. And they measure the water resistance of the different shapes. The time it takes for it to go from the top of the bottle to the bottom of the bottle. Always use the same piece of plasticine to ensure that you've got the same mass of plasticine. Uh, but this is really good to show streamlining, um, streamlining shapes. They can decide on the shapes that they make. Forces, again, is taught in year seven and or year eight. Moving on to electricity. This is the substantive knowledge that needs to be taught. And what differences and progression can you see between year four and year six? And here is the working scientifically at year four and year six electricity. The issue with teaching the disciplinary knowledge in this unit is the ease at which components break. A very good way of using this as a learning opportunity is for the child to troubleshoot and try to fix the issue if they know what should happen. There are also some really good simulation websites online. Um, FET, P-H-E-T, is a particularly good one. And then electricity is taught again in year seven. So the secondary teachers need to be very aware of what has been taught the previous year. It's mind, you could be mindful of making sure that the equipment that you have doesn't break very easily and that you use, perhaps you use um, electrical boards that, um, that are very much more less prone to breakages. Finishing off then, um, just looking back to, uh, I mentioned earlier about inquiry-based teaching. This should not be confused with scientific inquiry or with practical work generally. There are great problems with inquiry-based teaching. If solutions are withheld from pupils, they have to search for them themselves. And then this carries a heavy cognitive load. And this is further increased if they have to manipulate apparatus that they're not well skilled at using. Discovery learning in the absence of any guidance or sufficient prior substantive knowledge will not lead to progress and has been recognized as really pro problematic in science education. So hopefully I've been through each of these questions, the sort of questions you may or may not get in a deep dive or an inspection, and you've had a chance to think about how you would respond to each one. Here are the references that I've used. I've added the walkthroughs books here as I use them as a tool for planning a lot, a lot of my investigations, particularly the mode B sections and the explaining and modeling chapters. Thank you for listening to this session on physics for primary. Thank you. Bye-bye.